Let's talk about um, education. Um, the, Catherine, the cameras have been in your school making a documentary. Let's take a look. Three, two, two. So that's the ratio of three to two. When the teacher's speaking, everybody's quiet. Um, everybody's listening to the teacher. The classes are really, really quiet. There's no chatting about. We do talk to our partners, but only when the teacher tells us to. Let's take our seats. Step one, go. Step two, go. Step three, go. Ten, nine. Who's going to be the speediest? Eight, seven. Lovely Sahara. Six, five, four. Put your chairs all the way in. Three, two, and one. Detractors think that we are North Korea, that the children are deeply unhappy, that we are cruel to the children, and they've never even visited. Right, stand here, name and form nice and loud. I had detention for not having my second pencil. I made a silly face in the corridor to my friend, and I didn't see a teacher, but there was a teacher, and then, yeah, I got a detention for that. This is at the Michaela School. What do you think you're getting right, Catherine, and where others have failed? Well, I think people underestimate just how chaotic some schools can be. And um, uh, it, people imagine that I'm walking up and down with whips and chains and I'm the strictest headmistress and all of this. But actually, it's just about clarity. And the children can make a choice and they have agency. And the children are very happy and they love it. I mean, it is funny because, of course, when documentary makers come into your school, they're looking for the most strict things, you know, all that step one, step two business. Mm -hmm. I've actually never seen a class happen like that. So they, they found that particular class and then went and filmed that. So, you know, it, it, uh, the, the documentary in that sense slightly exaggerates things. Having said that, we are strict. And what that means is we love them. You want to immerse them in love. There are all kinds of rules that I talk about, about how to raise children. And it's not just for um, for teachers. This is also for parents. Uh, one of the guys who does our electrics came and watched the film and he said he learned how to be a better father in watching the film. So there's much, there's lots for everyone. And it's just that in 2022, children need order and clarity. And we need to believe that children have agency to then make the right choices about what they do. If I do this, I'll get a detention. If I do that, I get a merit. And they make, they make that choice. Right. Do you think that's a template that could work in every school, Paul? I hope not. Um, I'm glad this school exists. I'm a big supporter of diversity in education. Um, but I, I, my 13-year-old self would have run away from your school, I'm afraid. Um, because the... You know, we need to... T there are many other ways, aren't there, of achieving what you are absolutely rightly identify, which is that the behaviour and noise... Well, I, I'm a qualified teacher. I was a teacher. Um, Behaviour and noise are real obstacles, uh, as is, of course, the external environment to the school, the gang culture, the poverty, etc. I'm, if, if this is a way of counteracting it, I think it should be tried. We should celebrate the achievement of the children because they're achieving very high uh, exam results. But there are other good, there are good comprehensives that, that achieve good behaviour and good outcomes. So let's not fetishise one way of doing it, is all I would say. Well, I would say that all of those good schools are really great on the behaviour and they yeah. have structure and they have consistency. The key thing is to have consistency across your classrooms where the teachers are delivering something that's similar and, um, and to have high expectations of all children. And rather than think to yourself, well, this child comes from a poor background, so I'll let the homework go in this instance, or this child lives on an estate or his father isn't there, therefore I'm not going to expect the same standards for him, that that's wrong. Because in the end, you feel compassionate in the moment, but in the end, that child doesn't learn how to read, doesn't learn to be numerate and so on, and they pay the price later on in life. Right. Do you not need to take any account uh, in terms of children's backgrounds, what's going on at home or outside school, when you are dealing with what you say, the clarity and discipline that you think is required? Yeah, so in exceptional circumstances, at my school, for instance, if we ever... Uh, if we ever veer away from the rules, it's always me that makes that decision and only me. So it wouldn't, the ordinary teachers wouldn't be able to do that. Although it's funny because I see my teacher there going step one, step two, and I think, oh, that's not normally how we get the kids to sit down. So obviously there is some inconsistency, but consistency is good for children. They thrive in it. And that's when they can be creative. That's when they can, they can put forward their own points of view because they're safe and secure and loved. Do you think it's a template that could work everywhere? No. 
I mean, well done, you're doing a brilliant job, but I'm thinking about the schools in my constituency where there are so many social and economic problems and there's everything that's going around, around them, like you said, missing dads, and, mm. and, and they wouldn't have the wherewithal to meet the exacting standards in terms of the financial cost, uniform, for example, the, the equipment they would need, they just couldn't do it. Some of my schools are doing more social work than they are actual education, and that's the truth of it. Um, and I worry that... Um, I mean, I went to a school not dissimilar to that. It was a grammar school, and we had to stand up, and the teachers wore gowns, and it, it did me well, but there was a lot of girls who did rebel against that, and it didn't work out well for them. So I think there needs to be a balance here. How can you persuade Karen, if you opened a, a school in her constituency, that it would work? Well, I would say that we're in the inner city and we have similar sorts of children. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's less about cost. It's more about keeping your standards high and giving the same education to the poor as you would do the rich. But when you think to yourself, well, they're poor, so they can't do it, that's where we let children down. And it's by keeping those standards high that they then rise to them so that they're able to leave school, not just with brilliant GCSE results, but they're able to have this, the, the, the habits of success that will ensure that they have resilience and discipline in themselves, self-discipline, that they're ambitious, that, that they're able to build the kinds of skills and take the kind of knowledge that will see them through the rest of their lives. If we are so-called compassionate in that moment, um, because it makes us feel better, because we feel go good about ourselves by lowering our standards, it doesn't help those children in the end. Tim? I think what Catherine uh, is doing is brilliant. Uh, there are other schools who had similar uh, approaches. There are many, many more schools whose kids could benefit from this sort of, uh, of approach. And I think the real problem that Catherine uh, has absolutely identified is this poverty of aspiration for too many of our kids. I've seen it in my own constituency, where you have schools who will... The head will say to me, well, the trouble is, you know, the kids from uh, around here, they're never really going to do very well. And you've got another school, the other end of my constituency, with the same sort of uh, demographics, doing brilliantly. So it starts with leadership. It starts with having real aspiration for your kids and wanting your kids to do well, giving them that order uh, and, uh, and clarity and making them resilient. Uh, I think Catherine is on to something here. The results are showing it, but it's a very popular school. Lots of uh, parents want their kids to get, uh, to get into it. And I just want to see more of this uh, approach around the country. It won't fit absolutely everybody, but there's a lot more kids who could benefit to, uh, from it. Well, so all power to Catherine. And, to can, I, and can I just ask you, because, yeah, well, you say you, but you rail against progressives. Um, I think that was one of the parts of the, Who are they? So the people who have, I'd say, too low standards and also who um, don't... They, they argue against the teacher or the parent being in a position of authority and that it's the children who should be leading rather than the adult. And I think the adult is the one who should be taking charge and the children following us. And you're opening another school next year.